to verse 13. The beginning of God's holy word. All together. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man any more, save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what thing they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. And they asked him, saying, What say the scribes? Elias must first come. And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first, and restoreth all things, and how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. But I say unto you that Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the inspiration and the illumination that shall come forth. And we give you the praise, the glory, and honor in Jesus' name. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Tonight, we're going to talk to you briefly about the transfiguration. The transfiguration. Touch your neighbor and say, it's time for a change. Touch somebody else and say, it's time for a change. We're going to notice several things. We're going to look at the background here. Jesus took three disciples alone with him up into the mount. Then we're going to look at the transfiguration, the purpose of it, why the disciples needed to see the transfiguration, and why the transfiguration gave a unique opportunity to discuss God's messiahship. We begin to notice here in the introduction of this particular message, the purpose of the transfiguration was for the purpose of revealing heaven's glory. Heaven's glory would strengthen Jesus to bear the cross and to strengthen the disciples in their belief that Jesus is God's, the Messiah. When we begin to understand that before this here ninth chapter in the second verse, in the eighth chapter, Jesus begins to talk about his death and burial and resurrection. Peter began to proceed to rebuke Jesus. And um, Jesus began to look and turn around and say, get thee behind me, Satan. You see, Jesus called Peter a devil. Which means you can be a human devil. When your thoughts and ideology and your conversation and the things that you say is against the standard of God, you are a devil. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. See, devils come in all forms, all shapes, all sizes. Amen. And I believe the hour is upon us that we've got to call devils, those that are devils, we've got to name it and put a face to the name and let them know that's a devil. Yeah. 
Amen. When we begin to look at the force of opposition that is oppressing our people, we've got to face the devil. Amen. When we have oppositions in our life and individuals that the enemy raises up to stand against us, we've got to tell them you're acting just like the devil. Amen. And you know when your soul is not under the control of the Holy Ghost, amen, somehow Satan will come incarnate in your thoughts, amen, and you'll begin to speak like the devil. You don't even know why, amen. You go to acting like the devil, amen. You go to strategizing like the devil, amen. Touch your neighbor and say, don't let the devil get a hold of you. So we begin to see that Jesus had some disciples that flipped in and out every now and then and became a devil. Which goes to show you that there's a devil in every church. There's no perfect church. We have devils sitting among us tonight. We have individuals, amen, that will sup with us but is looking for the moment to betray us. A devil. Amen. And I want you to know that if you think you're devil proof, I want you to know before nightfall, the devil will jump in one of your loved ones. Raise something up in them. Amen. And that's why you've got to become so under control of the word of God. Amen. That you've got to begin to discern when your thoughts is not the thoughts of God. You've got to begin to discern when your ways is not moving in the ways of God. You've got to discern the things that is coming out of you. Is it humanistic or is it God? Amen. I have nothing against education. I think it's good. But if you don't go in the classroom covered with the blood of Jesus, women and men, amen, you'll come out with humanistic thinking, humanistic feelings, amen, and you begin to miss the entire purpose of God. Someone was sharing with me, a theologian says in the seminary, they are talking about removing the atonement out of the classroom. I said, why? And he says, because they says, when you leave and teach the atonement that God sent his son to be killed, then it begins to demonstrate God as a child abuser. The Bible says it pleased the father to bruise him. Amen. But when you try to reduce God to humanistic thinking... Amen. When you try to put God on the level you are on, you're going to miss the purpose of God. You won't understand his ways. Amen. Listen, look, listen. you cannot bring God down to where you're living. You've got to come up to where he is. That's why the Bible says you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Amen. So we begin to see here that Jesus took three of the disciples alone with him up into the high mountain. The Bible lets us know in verse 2 that they went into the high mountain. Amen. And one thing we need to understand is that every so often you need to come into the high place with God. Every so often you need to understand that God's going to bring you out of the valley into the high place. Amen. He wants to bring you to the mountaintop because he wants to show you something. Many cannot handle the mountaintop experience. And see, when you think you're ready for God, God is coming in a form and in a package that you're not ready for. Believe me what I tell you. The moment you think you're ready for God to show up, he's going to show up and you're going to find that you're going to have to make some fast steps to start to grow up. Amen. Some of us, we pray and say, Lord, I want more of you. And God says, can you take more of me? Amen. I want you to know that God wants to send things in your direction that will overwhelm you, that will leave you spellbound. Amen. When you get into the presence of God, amen, it has a way, amen, when you come into the high mountain where he begins to reveal himself to you, you may start saying, Lord, hide yourself from me. Thank you, Jesus. We begin to understand here, amen, the transfiguration that strengthens Jesus is also strengthened the, 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 the disciples. Now, we need to see the disciples here. The, Jesus didn't take all 12 up to the high mountain. Which means, even though you may be training many for leadership, everyone cannot be a part of the inner circle. Everyone cannot handle the information for the inner circle. 
Everyone cannot handle being close to leadership. It is good for some people to know.